scene. Uh, our last episode of 2018. Uh, we're going to be talking about taking breaks, the importance of them, why we don't take them, and why we should. Uh, I'm joined here by the hunter. Hunter, how are you doing today? I, I am now just the hunter, rebranding it. Uh, I've dropped wild out of my name <laughs> altogether. Hunter, please, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> yeah, poor Loco's not feeling not feeling good today. Um, I I am doing okay. Uh, I've I've run into some weird problems with, with with banking stuff. Got that solved today. Feeling really good about it. It gives me like those little senses of accomplishment, you know, that like yeah. then feed into Adulting. the other things that I want to do. Um, and coming up uh, this next week, I'm going to be gone for or af- after this coming week, I'm going to be gone for Christmas, which is a big portion of why I'm really interested in today's subject matter, because we're talking about uh, all the factors that are involved with taking time off, including um, things like how you try and compensate for that and the the approaches and attitudes that you have internally and externally for managing content. Do you need to be all hands off? Do you want to schedule stuff? Do you want to pre-record things? Do you want to be streaming while you're taking time off? Is that hazardous? Is that healthy? Where does that stuff lie? Got two wonderful guests today. Mop Garden and Nerdy Nettie. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Start with Mop. Sure. Um, Hi, my name is Mop. Um, I play a variety of games. I play a lot of shooters. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, I, yeah, that's really all I got. (laughs) That's a good start. (laughs) Um, I'm Nerdy Nettie, variety streamer. Um, I will be moving into four days streaming a week um and i play pretty much everything uh mostly horror genre and i will be starting to try to play last year uh the nightmare that's releasing tomorrow um (laughs) as a main game like or at least two of the streams and then two of the streams for other games okay so you said you said moving into four days yeah yeah, I'm, I'm five days now, but uh, I have to switch my schedule to make it work. So three days at my full-time job and then my four days at stream. And full-time because I'm still doing 33 hours <laughs> in those three days. In three oh days? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I'm writing that down. I'll, I'm gonna, we're going to get you on for a show about, <laughs> about job and stream. At yeah, the feel free because I just did the panel on TwitchCon <laughs> about that too with with greats i could not do that (laughs) yeah that has got to be a tough balance and um i think that goes into talking about like the first thing which is the need for streamers to take breaks and like the fact that we don't it's uh, you know it's we're always connected to social media and streaming right you talk you hear about like the grind of streaming and you have to stream all the time if you're not on then you're not making money and stuff like that uh and obviously there's there's it's not normal for people to work all the time whether it's a glorified (laughs) job like playing video games uh it's not a healthy thing to do right no not healthy Mm -hmm. and uh trying to find that balance and especially in my situation where i do have a full-time job taking a break is is a little detrimental because then i'm not doing my full stream schedule if i have to take a day off or a weekend off um because then it ends up being a full week before I can get back into streaming. So yeah. Oh my. Four days <laughs> sounds much more reason. Or four days you're going? Yeah, yeah. Four days. Right. When are you gonna take a weekend? Uh but never. never? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. You just have to look like crazy. Hunter was saying earlier, you just have to pre-plan it. You have to pre-plan those times mm. and then make an event out of it. And then I was think- yeah. I wanted a to curiosity. ask you about that. Yeah. A curiosity about, about that is that the, the planning itself requires time. So you yes. gotta take you gotta carve time out in order to plan for the taking the time off. And sometimes you can't even get the initial time <laughs> that yeah. you need to make the plan. Yeah. It it poses a lot of problems. But that's why I wanted to talk to you about uh, how you do the um, reruns and all of that. Cause I still don't have any idea of how reruns work. Um, how can I both do reruns? Mop, do you, yeah. do you do reruns at all? Sometimes, not often. Um, but yeah, if I'm going away, then I do for sure. Well, so uh, one of the curious factors that I, well, I've used that twice in a minute now. 
one of the interesting <laughs> qualities <laughs> that I that I um, learned about reruns during TwitchCon. I was um, HB Fox, the uh, manager of the stream, also of Streamer Square. He went in and um, created all these highlights for me from my Assassin's Creed Odyssey playthrough, and we were ready to all load load them all up for a rerun session while I was gone. And uh, and I learned in that moment that you can't do a rerun for more than 24 hours at a time. Now, this makes sense to me. I know that they were trying to, this has all been part of a, a balancing act on, on Twitch's side to prevent people from not even engaging with their streams, you know, just creating content and just letting it go on repeat forever. Um, people do that. <laughs> what's that? People do do that. Yeah, exactly. And that's sort of what I was going to do for a six-day period was just have the pre-recorded stuff going. But you're restricted on that. And I think that there's something in there that is kind of healthy about that. Um, but you're restricted on what you can do for, for the reruns. Yeah. I use reruns in conjunction with 12-hour streams because I, I feel like this is like the, the clearest smart move that I can make. I do 12 hour streams for big launch events and then 12 hour reruns so that those kind of cycle in together. What I don't really use it for is exactly the subject of today of taking the taking real time off. Okay. And I'm not sure yeah. how to balance it. I know Loco also does reruns really so, often. Yeah. So I do reruns like at like overnight. Um, but I've, uh, I've used the rerun system when I take a vacation or something during my normal stream time. So uh, you know, it's the time where people expect me to be on. I'm showing them content. Obviously, it's not the same as being live, but it is a nice supplement. It's like kind of one of those things. It's better than nothing. Um, and to what you mentioned with uh, the caveat of the feature is that you have to, you can't like pre-schedule uh, reruns. Like you have to have, someone has to go in and manually set it up and start it at the time that it's ready. Yeah, That's rough. Yeah. You can't yeah, so, schedule that. Right. So you're not like if you unless you have like get your mods to do it, like then you you find yourself trying to take a break, but still having to do things to accomplish that break. Which and you're is gonna check on it to make the sure that point. they did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And also when they are having reruns, do you have your mods there to mod uh to monitor the chat and right. keep coming in? Uh, right. Which means like either you're doing it or you're having to ask one of your mods to help you out with that. Um, right. Which also kind of sucks too. Just open and up like, for no one wants to yeah. sit there. Yeah. yeah. It's and kind of say, rerun. <laughs> yeah. This is not live. It's not. Yeah. Live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think like one thing to help with that is having uh, like just really good auto mod features that kind of get most of that bad stuff out anyway. Yes. So it's like, okay, someone's gonna come in and troll a channel that like has a fraction of its normal viewers, and most of them are lurking and not paying attention anyways. It's like, uh. I don't think we've run into that yeah, problem. Yeah, no trolls are really going to stick around to just yell at themselves. You know? <laughs> like that, it defeats right. the purpose if they're the only ones who are paying attention to their own harsh words. So true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But overall, I think the feature is beneficial. Like, I mean, you could put stuff on YouTube, but like, I don't do YouTube primarily. So, like, no one's going to go over to YouTube it's for me to, to see to new move content. It's platforms for that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, I mean, in the same toward toward the same end, Mop, you've used premieres. So okay, so what what how would you describe what premieres are and like sort of what they do? It's like a a YouTube video, like a let's play walkthrough, playthrough, whatever, um, that you can actually set for a specific time to premiere. You can schedule so that. that. Yes. So unlike oh. um, reruns you can say, I want, I normally start my stream at 9.30. So when I've done them, I have started them at 9.30 um, and then they go through. The problem is, is you can only upload up to, it says 20 gigs, but it's actually like 18.9. Cause it's like in the like giga gigs or whatever the smaller <laughs> fraction is. Cause I, I had uploaded a video and they were like, no, sorry, it's actually whatever thousand whatever's <laughs> yeah I, that, I get lost in that. <laughs> like, tell me the real thing so i can do whatever yeah that is. exactly and so that was an issue so i had to split it up into two separate things and then if it ends at like 
10 32 you can't start your next one until like 11 because it's on the half an hour so like if people were watching it then they're gonna leave and then they won't know that your next like part is coming out um like 20 minutes from then so that's definitely a problem that i've encountered with that oh um, so you can't have a continuous yeah yeah and i mean I think it's 20 gigs and that's really not that long of a video. I think it's like mine was two hours or something. And so if you want to upload like a full game, I think I did unravel two, which is like four and a half hours. I had to split it up into like two or three different clips. And then, you know, everyone leaves after the first one and then probably don't come back for the next yeah. part so that is definitely an issue but um i think it's a really nice feature like i saw someone in a discord being like it's cool not pre-recorded content for us um, yeah yeah do you know if it has but to be pre-recorded or like is it sort of within the realm of possibility to take all of my uh, assassin's creed odyssey highlights download them upload them as premieres or may yeah. and maybe even to try and fit them into the the size, maybe downscale them to 720p, 30 FPS or something. No, you could definitely, you could definitely do that. And then just do like a big highlight video. I actually kind of found out about it accidentally because I was trying to upload just a 20 minute highlight video from the month. And uh, it was like schedule your premiere. And I was like, well, I don't want to schedule a premiere. I just want to upload my video. And so I had to like do a random premiere one night to get it uploaded. Yeah. And was like, this is kind of weird, but okay. But like, I think it's good. It's a good option for, you know, if you are going away. And then you can so do that and have X length of highlights, which people would enjoy. So do you use the Premiere system to uh, supplement your normal stream then? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. no, not regularly. Just Okay, but if you go on a break? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so if you're, but if you're, if you have like a five- six hour stream then you have to schedule what like three to four premieres for one stream yeah so <laughs> it is kind of uh it, it's like i feel like it could be a little bit better it, it feels like it's like not like as a, a efficient or effective do you, um i guess how do you think like your viewers take it um I mean, not many people show up. Realistically, I think the average viewer count is like 9 to 11 or something like that. Because especially for a community that's very focused on interaction and stuff. Right. I think right. it's, you know, I kind of use it as like, I've been wanting to play this game that people might not really want to watch anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to play it in my own time, enjoy it, and then just record it. And then that can be my like content for while I'm gone. So I think like that's a good a good way to do things like I played some weird indie games and stuff for it just you know bonus yeah and you can always sort of play it up as like an indie showcase and sort mm -hmm. of market it as something you know unique if you yeah. want with each one that's scheduled and then when they start running do they does your community get notified every single time for each one like if you were to do multiple ones in a day do you know like with that I'm live pop-up. Sure. Yeah, because you know? sometimes you people will get notifications of the rerun going up, right? This is the same thing for premieres. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then every well, time it comes up, I'm I'm saying yes, yeah, and like oh, I know. Yeah. What you're like saying. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is that? Do you know if that's a if that's what they do? I like, actually have no idea. <laughs> I won't lie, but it would be technically like a separate thing because there's so much time in between it. Because right. I think if you, even if you click stop streaming and then start streaming right away, I think it still notifies people that you go live, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so I would think it would. Um, but I think like on Twitch's end, it would be great if any Twitch staff hear this to allow like larger than 20 gigs or whatever the max is because, you know, you don't want to have a six or seven hour like gameplay split up into these different sections. It's just, uh, yeah. 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 And it, it, it's, it is a bit of a curiosity to me too. Um, cause on the one side, you know, the, my first thought is, well, it makes sense to have a, a, a hard limit on it. Um, because you know, it, it, that's a lot of space that, uh, storage, storage space that they'd have to have, that they'd have to commit to it. But like, 
they, they're storing like 90 days or 60 or 90 days of my streams. And I'm doing like 10, 12 hours to like, that's a lot of storage that they're already committing to right. my past broadcasts. And if they're, you know, if, if, if the platform would be wanting to sort of move into the pre recorded space, I would imagine they'd want to give us a, a broader tool set or, or more opportunity to create the kind of content that we'd want to instead of more restriction. So I'm, 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 I wonder what the reason is for that. I'd really like to, to know that one, the purpose behind the 20 gig limit. I'm not too sure. It might be because Twitch has been so focused on live streaming for so long. Maybe they don't want people to do yeah. what I kind of did and just record eight hours of video well, they, and upload it. Open it up. They they created this uh, feature. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. They, they they do want it. Um, I just I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't. It's not, Maybe it's not, just because it's like in testing. Mind. Like they don't want to dedicate that much storage yeah. and like space to something that they might just i mean you've seen what they're they're scrapping a ton of things right now like there's a ton of rework going into twitch right now so uh i'm I'm sure they're yeah i'm sure they're still testing that feature and the the rerun system too is you know obviously imperfect um one thing i actually thought about that's kind of interesting is like if you're using reruns to um like replace your normal live streams because you're away on a break uh that that appears in people's following list at normal. Like there's not a separate tab, which to me is like I would prefer a separate tab because I don't want to go and watch a rerun. Yeah. But like for a viewer that's like, oh, Loco streams at this time every day, I can find her on my following list. Like they just click it and it's like, you know, they just think it's a normal stream, right? Because it's just mixed in with everything else. Yeah, they kind of yeah. pushed it to the bottom of the list though now reruns, I think, right? Or is it still- Oh, have they? Sort of. That was still mixed up, but I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, I, and they made it much more obvious. Like, it doesn't like, I mean, obviously, <laughs> this is always our problem. Do they read? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they get a lot more obvious saying on the top of the entire, like, it, like when you go to all your following, um, it says rerun or it says event or it says premiere, whatever. Mm-hmm. But again, yeah, people would have to it's not at the, the bottom, and- right? It's not. It's so it's still like mixed in. So like, okay. if someone has like three hundred viewers on a on a rerun, like well, yeah. they're uh, shuffled the with yeah. those three hundred viewers. The bottom viewers. is that it's like one eighth of the normal viewership, right? That's so then that's why it's yeah, the bottom that's of the true. List. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah, that yeah I've had so many people pop resubs and stuff and like give oh, bits yeah. during oh, reruns I've and been like rated oh, repeatedly no. during reruns. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and, and of course, you know, there's a lot of my friends and stuff and they'll like harass me on Twitter and I'm like, I'm sorry. I, 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 don't know. I wasn't there. Well, sometimes like oh, there, yeah. there, there are a couple of little small things like the, um, you know, I'll be doing a 12 hour stream and sometimes I'll maybe just forget to put rerun instead of my red dot. That's like my here's I'm, I'm live thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of other times it just hasn't refreshed yet. Um, because I'll end a 12 hour stream and, and go raid somebody. So that all my live and active viewers go over to somebody else's channel, but then I'll start the rerun right afterward to do the, the 12 hour rerun up until I stream again. And, uh, when it's that close together, it's really good. Cause it maintains like the lurker viewership, but it also sometimes maintains the live, uh, tag on the video player and like on the, on the listing. And that can get really confusing. Um, yeah. So, what, what was that, Loco? Um, I I kind of wanted to get into uh, other social media tools That's for when exactly you're. Exactly what I was butting into. <laughs> this is this is why we are co-hosts. <laughs> we are in tune. Um, you guys use things like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, to create content when you're on a break, like maybe pre-scheduled things. Yeah, like using like Hootsuite or ITTTF. ITTTTTTF. <laughs> no, I would actually like to learn how to, to work with that. Um, do. But most of the time, I just try to provide content, especially if, I, if I'm on vacation. Again, this is another thing. It's like, okay, when you go away, do you actually want to enjoy your time off and be completely disconnected? Right. Or do you want to, or do you still really try to like- into that subject a, yes, bit, a little bit. Because you're away, sure. And then you're actually doing stuff. You're like, okay, well, maybe I'll like keep my- you know, community involved and showcase that to them. But then you're on your phone all the time. And then people that you're with are like, okay, seriously, you're on your phone all the time. And it's like, it, then you're not enjoying yourself really because you're living mm-hmm. through your phone. Um, so I would love a real vacation. 
-hmm. Yeah, I would love to learn how to do like pre-scheduled uh, uh, things with social media, but I've never, never gone into the Hootsuite or any of those available programs. Have you, Logo? I, uh, not really like, so if I take a break, like I, I do the reruns during my normal stream. Um, and then like, I'll do Instagram stories like here and there, like if it's like, you know, food or whatever, just like, I try not to be too tapped into my phone. Right. Um, but I, like on Twitter, I don't know what I would, what type of content I would pre-schedule. And I, I don't have like a back storage of like pictures where I can be like, you're going to get some new selfies, guys. Going to plan <laughs> out these selfies <laughs> once every two days or something. So I don't really do anything pre-scheduled. No, not with, not with Twitter, but like maybe, maybe with Instagram and stuff, but the stories are kind of live. I don't know how you would pre-schedule the st stories. I, I guess you just upload. Yeah. you actually pre-schedule that stuff? I'm the worst. The stories, no. Same. The I'm stories so I won't pre-schedule. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you, you can even do that. Instagram's still okay. like, I don't know. I don't know what Instagram <laughs> is, but um, I think like with, for me, like the stories is a way that like, I'll do them every now and then when I'm on vacation and like I realize, like you know, for the most part, I'm kind of just fully disconnected. Yeah. Um, but it's like if it's something that it's like, oh, like you know, this would be cool to, to stream to keep somewhat in touch with where I'm at, without without feeling like I'm too tapped into social media. Yeah. What do you do, Hunter, when you're away and uh, try to schedule content? Here's what I do before I'm away. I say, you guys can expect this, this, and this. What I do when I'm actually away is none of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> I, like, it's ridiculously stupid. I, I know myself at this point, and, and I've got, fortunately, I've gotten, I've gotten less dumb about it, um, where I'm like, here's what I want to do. And those of you who know me know that you can't expect any of these things, but here's what I want to do. Uh, and I've gotten better about some participation with it. What I would like to do, and I'm trying to get my organization for personal and professional uh, set in together because my, my personal life can be a dumpster fire. My professional life is like all go all the time. I want to try to uh, work in some time management in a variety of ways. One of those things potentially being <laughs> exactly what you were talking about. Uh, joke, joking about was like taking a bunch of like selfies in different situations like even just goofy stuff like i have a ton of onesies i could just get in onesies grab a cat take a selfie boom <laughs> that's gonna be like a really valuable post yeah <laughs> and it, i don't have to do anything special for it like that could seriously take three minutes and i can pre-schedule uh the 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 release of my uh, dragon onesie kitty photo you know is there actually a thing in instagram where it says post on the state i don't know about instagram no okay mm -hmm. The, the Hootsuite program itself, you would have to up almost up, load it on that and it will schedule on your social media, whatever you have it yeah. programmed to, oh. to do that for you. Web and I've never heard mobile of mobile app. Yeah, okay. It's got a little owl on it. And there's also, hmm. if this, then that, uh, I don't remember, I never remember how many T's it has. That's why I put like 18. It's like, I have T, 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 T. If this, then that, <laughs> uh, I guess it's three T's, I have T, 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 which is um, uh, a sort of a logic uh, setup. There, you could do the um, uh, when you're when you do a certain type of thing, it triggers another type of thing. So when you post one thing here on Twitter, it will take that and translate that into an Instagram post. If you if you post with a with a photo so and, vi and vice versa, and you can do these sorts of things so that you only post to one platform or one thing, and it will do the work for you. It's not simple. You have to learn how it works and you have to test it out. And of course you have to fail to figure out like, oh, I can't do that that way. Or, oh my God, it broke and did oh, all oh this. Gosh. Then you'd yeah. also have to make sure you make a perfect post on your Twitter, which is always what yeah. I get. <laughs> yes, there are, there, are, there are like rules that you sort of have to yeah. follow to make sure that like the formatting is correct as it transfers over. But these are sort of, these are, these are tools that can be used okay. for, I, I almost want to say like for people who want to be the power users, who also want to really take advanced steps to disconnecting. Yeah. There's yeah. also for Instagram, there's something called later, uh, which allows you to schedule um, Instagram posts, uh, pictures mm. and videos and stuff. So 
another tool that you can use. Okay, That's cool. Out. Later? It's called Later. Yeah, later.com. They got later.com? Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep. That's really good to know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm going to look at that. Yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be testing some yeah. of these things out over the holidays. Um, uh, hey, Chad, if you want to help me test some of these things out, go follow me on Instagram at the Hunter <laughs> Wild and on Twitter at the Hunter Wild TV. You can help me figure it out. <laughs> Got him. There you go. That's <laughs> perfect. You're a genius. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, like for me, I think like you have to know like how much of like a step back you need to take from social media to like yeah. really feel yeah. refreshed on a break. Like if you take a break and you are just on Twitter the whole time, like for me, I yeah. don't feel like I'm disconnected enough. Right. But like yeah. that goes back to like with the Instagram stories where I feel like I can do some Instagram stories to keep chat up, to, like in the know-how of like what's generally what I'm doing, but like without me feeling burnt out. Um. So yeah, I, you have to need to know your breaks bit. too. Do does any of you ever have that anxiety of just like, of, of like, constantly. oh my god, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to actually disconnect, but you can't because you're constantly racing about, yeah, thinking about the stream, like, oh maybe I should put it's some reruns on, or, or maybe I should upload something today because you're constantly having to try to make engagement happen. But then, it's so I'm exciting. I've oh I've never been able to actually fully chill out on my vacations yet. Same. I haven't reached that point. Um, Here's the tension for me. Yeah. I, as I described a second ago, when I'm not, when I'm on vacation of any sort and trying to take time away, I have the pressure internally for I should be doing something. I should be keeping up with people. I should be producing content. And that's when I'm trying to disconnect. When I'm trying to go on vacation but have scheduled time and produce content, I feel the constant pressure to not and i'm and i'm like no i should be disconnecting and so there's like an anxiety no matter which direction i choose because there's always there's a value in each and there's a reason that you shouldn't do each at different times and i don't know how to reconcile that um i'm really okay. interested to hear how you guys feel about that time off like when you've experienced this in the past I think the thing like, and I'm bad at this too, but I think like if you're going to commit to taking time off, you should like commit to the time off. Like you're taking this time off of your stream to better yourself. So don't like be stressed about the stream because you're off anyway. You know, if you have like a good community, which I feel like most streamers do or else you wouldn't stream yeah. like they're gonna be there when you're back you know I think it's if you're posting that you're gonna be gone like just be gone if that's what you want to do you know and I right. again I'm really bad at that as well but um just turn off your phone for a day even just one day and just enjoy you know I think I broke I the think... off button from my phone <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it just doesn't go it just off doesn't go off <laughs> well, I mean, like if you if you're taking time off because you need to disconnect and you don't like you're going to end up like a either coming back and not feeling refreshed and that's going to hurt your stream or yeah. needing more time off, which oh, is yes. just then mm. you're taking so much time off, right? That you're just making it worse. So like yeah. if you need that time off, like like be like, "All right, I'm going as lazy as possible during this day off. Like I'm doing nothing. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm just going to enjoy it." Like I feel like I've gotten a lot better at like truly enjoying my time off because I'm like, I need this and I know I'll feel better I've if I just get away. I've heard a lot from you about that, Loco. Oh, yeah? You've been a fantastic guide for taking <laughs> taking time off. <laughs> I mean, I haven't taken a day off this week or I mean this month, but like, yeah, I mean. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. You guys are cool. um, But I mean, I, I guess like when you do it enough times, you realize like when you come back it's not that bad like the, the the sky is not falling when you come back your stream isn't dead like you come back and pretty much everything is mostly the same like yeah you take a hit on subs yeah, yeah you might take a little yeah. hit on the viewers but like you feeling refreshed like you're going to get that back and then some like it allows okay. you to keep going and keep building once it's like taking like one sorry. step back I'm sorry. it's like taking one step back and then like two steps forward right like yeah yep 
I, th I think confirmation bias is a big deal here, right? When you take time off and you come back and your sub count hasn't dropped by 30,000, <laughs> uh, you, you go, oh, good, and then yeah. move on with your day. When you come back and your sub count has dropped and you're thinking about revenue loss and whatever, that sticks in your mind and you'll never forget it. I know. Like, ever. That's a hit. And, yeah, and it ends up being a confirmation bias for um, the negative qualities of taking time off. Those are the only things that you end up remembering, not how the time off benefited I, yeah. you or not how you didn't lose a goddamn thing because when you took time off. Only really you're going to stick to the memories of when it harmed you, which yeah. is a that's a valuable survival quality for like built into us sort of genetically that's, yeah but it's which is part of why we need I, I think to have shows like this to talk about these things where everybody can go like oh yeah i have that same like anxiety i have that same issue i have that same bias and it's a, a rampant one i think in uh for, for that for, for those particular attributes within our industry in the same way that our industry i think it tends to bring out the workaholic in most of us and, and, and reward that just incidentally. Mm -hmm. Right. That's exactly it. Um, and I think that you almost have to prepare yourself and just remind yourself that that might happen. And then that way, maybe you can easy the blow when it does, um, instead of like going on a break being like, it's gonna be so fun. And then, then, uh, not really thinking about that might happen. And then when you come back, you see it and you're like, oh crap. What do you uh, think about like I formulating an acceptable loss? Like before you take a break. I, think, like, I would think you'd have to. You just have to like come to terms with it before you leave. And then that way it's not as bad when it, when you come back. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm, I'm at 500 now. I'm going to be gone for a week. An acceptable loss. Like I could I could still be okay with 300. Like if that's the kind of mentality. Yes. Right. 100 subs or whatever it happens to be. Also the thing too that I've never. So like when you're away, you're not really losing subs you're just not gaining them because you're gone for a week so it's not know, like yeah exactly if someone subbed on the first and you're gone from the fourth to the i don't know eighth you're not losing that sub because they already subbed for the month so you're right. not you know you're not maybe gaining gifted subs and prime subs but you're not you're just like delaying them resubbing basically. Yes. That's all, right. that's all, yeah. You try to explain that to some people and then it's always been a weird thing about the actual system behind that. It's that when you see them dropping, they'll resub once you're back live and then you yeah. go back up again, but people forget but that. People, yeah, they do. They just see the drop and they're like, <gasps> yeah, but, so yeah. That's not because be they took a break, right? That's not like a hundred people literally unsubbed yeah, they're not going like, oh, they're time. not live. Cancel, cancel, yeah. cancel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what a lot of people think. They think like, oh, I, went, I wasn't there for a week. That's clearly why they left. And you're like, yeah. no, that's not how that yeah. We're too close to our own channels and we're too close to our own commitment and we're too close to our own creativity on these things. Yeah. And the being the small business owner, like you're responsible for every perceived failure. Somehow you're not responsible for your own successes, but you're definitely responsible for your own perceived failures. Yeah. And these are the failures that we perceive, even when they're not failures at all. And so then we we that it becomes a, its own burden and its own weight, and we make decisions based off of that. Like this idiot refusing to take time off, pretty much ever. Right, yeah. and I think like one of the issues is what we see on social media and the ideas that that we like put out there which is like oh god i've lost so many subs um i'm going on va i'm gonna take a break i've lost all these subs and it's like first of all your viewers don't want to hear you complain about that and second of all like it makes yeah. every other streamer like really like hone in on that fact and when when really you should be like you know i hey i took a break and i had a great time like i think people really focus on so the, the drop that. yeah you yeah. that yeah actually that's a really <laughs> Thank God you said that because I just noticed that sometimes you notice on other people's streams that they've been saying that out loud and it just creates a negative uh, atmosphere. And then you sometimes notice that you've been saying it maybe once in a while. <laughs> You'll like mention it. You're like, oh, shoot. Right. No, 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 don't, don't say that. You had to keep it more positive. Like I def definitely been more conscious of like making sure to not bring that into your streams. Like it's like a workplace, right? Your, your stream and your channel and your content is your workplace. Don't mm -hmm. bring in the negativity. Always try to make it more of a positive atmosphere. And positive mindset for you so that you can start believing that everything's gonna be fine <laughs> yeah. yeah and everything always is fine everything's fine 
Well, well. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, where is the tell moon? yourself right. that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I, I just uh, coincidentally, I was, uh, I have made it a habit now to watch a lot of TED Talks. I get in the shower and I'm like, scrub a dub dub, so TED Talk is on. Mm -hmm. um, and I was listening to one on optimism the other day and how optimism is unhealthy in certain regards. Okay. Uh, optimists and um, pessimists both perceive themselves as realists, right? We're like, no, 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 this is you know, to falsely <laughs> thinking that this accords with, with reality. But I think that uh, it could be very, very healthy to have a realism check, sort of like what I, I guess was popped into my head before was like, what is the acceptable loss? Like if I'm, you know, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. You're you're an affiliate with eight subs subscriptions. You're a you know, f eight year long partner with thirty thousand. Um, where's the where's the range? Can you can you sort of demarcate where it would be perfectly fine, where you'd still be okay, and put that in a visible place? You come back. Of course, it might be hazardous if you actually go below that, but you'll be be within a range. You know, of like. Normally it's thirty thousand. You expect to come back to twenty-two thousand after two weeks off for a vacation, and you you mark that, and you're like, "That's where I'll still be fine. I'll still be okay if that's the case." And then you can come back and go instead of hopefully like, "Oh, I lost so much stuff." Go like, "Oh, I totally I stayed within the uh, the reasonable margins," or you know, are in Jesus. Uh, oh, this it's way better than what I thought it was going to be. I'm actually above the. Uh, my my acceptable loss range mm -hmm. yeah i always i'm a fairly anxious person and something i need to always tell myself is what's the worst that could happen <laughs> and I, think that's a very, I honestly think that's a very important question and you know like <laughs> the same thing what what's the worst that could happen like sure you missed some resubs but like maybe those people wouldn't have resubbed anyway. Like, yeah. you no, know, I'm sure you lose some followers, but you'll always gain more. Like, and I've definitely you know? had worse. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely had really? worse. Really? Whatever this Christmas loss is going to be, I've had way worse. Really? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, and man. that may, maybe I'm you know I'm totally into that. Yeah, I like that. I like the perspective. Is like, what's the worst going to happen? Or mm -hmm. what was the worst time that I had? And how is this going to be totally not that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a, another thing to think about is instead of um, honing in on the fact that you, you're going to lose subs during the break, be like, no, understand this and then be like, OK, so what can I do to when I come back that can make that up? Like, yeah. do something fun, like plan like yes. a party or a special event, like put some time into planning something out so that when you come back, your viewers missed you, you do something special and you, you know, make up that loss a bit. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. A special event. Right, T yeah. that type of thing that you, I always think about events, right? Because I host events all the time. But that is something that becomes unique. Ideally, now I'm gonna throw this one out there. There's a pre-built tool on Twitch. It's the events uh, thing. Now you don't have to do a special event, oh, yeah. but you can actually schedule your return stream. You don't have to do go over the top and you know spend a billion dollars on giveaways and do some crazy thing. You can literally just schedule. We're coming back. Here's when we'll be back live again for people to simply know and expect and anticipate. And that could be, it could be as simple as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that gets you oh. excited too. Yeah. One thing yeah. too that I do do while I'm away is uh, I try to take a lot of pictures. Sometimes I'm really bad at it. And then I do like a, like a stream in the beginning and I show everyone all those pictures. So then I can like tell stories and like engage with them about what I was doing while I was gone. So they don't feel like I was just, you know, away not thinking about them ever and it turns you the know? time off into content after <laughs> the fact so that you're not necessarily working while you're taking the time off but we're storytellers we're humans that's how that works yeah. you come back and you want to share that stuff and people who are interested in who you are especially with us as variety streamers right it's all community stuff they're gonna be like drawn into that yeah yeah i think pictures are a really good way to do that so yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's content that, that feeds into itself. Um, yeah. So uh, now, Netty, you recently just took a break. Um, yeah. Literally if, a full on cutoff break, too. Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience with that? Uh, yeah. So I, I want, like, I definitely have prepared my community that I'll be gone fully for the seven days. I was actually going to completely disengage and 
take a mental health break. Um, and then just actually enjoy myself. Uh, and then the, the stages of that <laughs> was the anxiety in the beginning of the, of the, of the break, literally right. on the plane and being like, Oh my God. Um, and then, uh, the whole time too, like I, I actually did enjoy myself and I managed to relax and just lounged around and didn't do much. And it was great. Uh, but I still had those worries at least once a day of like, Oh, maybe I should run a rerun or, you know, I should do something, but cause I was just so not used to fully disengaging like a hundred percent. Cause usually when we take the vac vacations, it's a con or it's, it's something yeah. related to our industry. Um, and then that's, that, that was the first time I've ever just in the, in the three years I've been streaming that, uh, that I've actually fully disengaged. So yeah. it was, it was good though. I'm glad I did. And I got a lot of stuff yeah. that I needed to get done and for my, just for my personal self, nothing to do with Twitch or anything. Um, and then it wasn't that big of a hit when I came back, surprisingly, and uh, everyone still kept, was still there. So I was like, okay, well, <laughs> that's why it's like, you said, I prepared myself though beforehand that I might take a huge hit with being gone full seven days. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it ended up being okay. So I'm taking another seven days off around New Year's and uh, I'm yeah, so proud like, of you. <laughs> look at me that's now. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm screaming pretty much every every moment I can until that date to yeah. kind of like put my mind at ease. So, how much did you commit ahead of time, like to the approach that you were going to take to being off? It was about a month. Like, I just definitely kept letting everyone know. Oh, I sorry. Mean, like, um, uh, to the to the like the mentality. Like, you were talking about the anxieties of every day. You were like, should I run a rerun? What should I do? This oh. other stuff. Did you, did you, so you, you said that you set up some expectations for yourself in advance. You're like sort of the acceptable loss kind of a thing. It's like, here's what I'm expecting to happen, yeah. but I know that I need the time off. Did you, did you have anything where you were like, I'm definitely, I'm not during this vacation going to do X, Y, Z, even though during the vacation, you were probably like, oh yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about maybe doing the X, Y, Z thing. How much did yeah. you commit to, to like the approach or the, the behavior that you were going to commit to during the vacation and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I definitely said I wasn't going to do any social media and I didn't. So I was, you really actually stuck myself. to it? Uh huh. I did. Yeah. I did. That's I did. The moment I came back, I, I, I upload. That's when you saw my tweet where I was like, this is the time where I need to take a vacation and just actually fully disengage. I did run a rerun, even though I said it wasn't going to. <laughs> I did manage to do one. But uh, that was, I did actually manage to stick to not doing any social media engagement while I was away. So I could fully disengage. It, yeah, it was. I did it. <laughs> That's, That's good. Yeah. For seven days? For seven days. Were you working too, or did you just take work off as well? Uh, I, I was working. So I, okay. it would have been only a four day, technically. Like I right. was just, yeah. But uh, because, like I said, For because I work, it yeah, yeah. Being a seven day. Yeah. It would have been awesome if you took work off too. Oh, you God. Like yeah. stayed yeah. in pajamas all day. <laughs> yeah. That's the dream. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm taking two weeks off from the, so my last day is on Friday and I'm off until the eighth. So I'm pretty excited. So I will be taking a full seven days around new year's and that no work, no nothing. And nice. That's great. About it. That's awesome. God, this is inspiring. <laughs> and it, well, that's why I said it was really actually pretty awesome. That still everything was the same, like it relatively the same. Maybe my numbers dropped a little bit, but not that substantially, you know? You know, it just occurred to me that, that it does sort of feel like leaving a fire unattended, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, so like a candle you're at your house. I'm not sure if you're, how you're going to come back to like your whole stream is just smoking cinders. <laughs> or if you're going to come back and like the candle's just still there making it smell good or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. I think the thing to remember is like in, if we had a a normal job, whatever you consider that to be, you would get, two weeks if not more i know someone that gets six weeks we were talking about today yeah um a vacation so like as a streamer you should be taking at least two weeks off a year um because that's if you worked in the real world for lack of a better word <laughs> right <laughs> you know not on twitch you had a real days. job yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and i like that we're trying to it, like we're like a mob lord is always trying to make a way for streamers to go on a vacation um into a place where you won't have your computers anywhere near you that kind of thing to set up anything you're actually just gonna be yeah good luck streaming out. from a boat yeah exactly <laughs> uh that's what i love about it i don't know if you have you ever been on that the, yeah the i went on the first year boat? nice and how was it 
I couldn't afford it this year, but uh, yeah. it was it was amazing. It was the first vacation I had taken the entire time that I'd been streaming. Um, wow. And that was wow. when I was about uh, 7,000 hours into streaming without one vacation, right? And like, that's not, that's like what's the same thing you're talking about. It's like real job, Pff, good luck. Yeah. Uh, you know, people talk about how the, the the real job is the, or the real job, the real job in the real world is like the really harsh place and you have it so cushy streaming. Yeah, dude, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a single vacation in 7,000 hours of streaming, right? And that's a common story. That's not uncommon at all. And I really wish that it were really, really uncommon or unheard of or that people would scold us more for it. Like I want, I want to feel guilty for working that much, but instead I feel guilty for taking the time off. And that needs to be a, a paradigm that completely flips. And I think a lot of us are working on making the culture of streamers and streaming shift in that appropriate direction this, this conversation that we're having right now. Why is it not so bad? What are things that you can do to create content? What is the mentality that you should have when you're taking time off? How much time off is good? Um, I don't even yeah. know if there's a bad number for how much time off, you know, it's like, cause you, it, you, a lot of that's about just managing your expectations and your needs. Yeah. I mean, I think also like you're just starting to see more streamers burn out. Like, you know, a lot of us are getting into streaming for, you know, four or five years. Like, Lyric t streams seven days a week until like what last year he finally was like okay this is like a set day off yeah like, and everyone's six, like six days yeah, yeah. thank God yeah. like finally like <laughs> it's kind of yeah it is it's insane um and I think just that just goes into again like what we the things we talk about the things that we promote on social media like we don't promote taking breaks we promote grinding the stream. 20 hours a day. And like. humble brag about it. I know that about myself personally, right? It's like all the things I've just been saying right here, like I'm proud of that to an effect, right? To to an extent, I mean, where I'm like, I've streamed 10,000 hours in four years. I hate it, but respect my work ethic. Like, I don't know yes. how that there's sort of like this internal drive to make it clear that I'm like, you know, really hardcore and whatever. At the same time as I'm like slowly killing myself with like overworking. And it's the same thing too. Like I've, I've noticed this as a curiosity for my particular situation. I think it's true of a lot of us. I watched my dad overwork himself and he still does this at 65 or 68 or whatever, overwork himself when I was a kid. And I was like, ah, I'm never going to, you know, I'm never going to be that guy. I'm never going to do that. And it would be so cool if I could grow up and play video games. I grew up and play video games and work harder than he ever did when I was a kid. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And I'm like totally turning into that thing that I was like, no, it's insane what he's doing. He should be having fun in life because there's a point at which, you know, you won't be able to have that stuff and you never know when that's going to happen. And the whole work yeah. to live, uh, the whole live to work to live is the better one than the live to work thing. Yes. We get stuck in streaming in the, in the live to work. Like I mentioned a couple of times having a, my paying an extraordinary amount of money to have my own personal recharge station, which is my house. The or virtually the only thing I use it for is to sleep and prepare food just energy to stream like that's all that i use that for and it's bad you, that's unhealthy do you take weekends or do you stream seven days no. a week i i well I, it's mostly seven days a week it's not i okay. don't have a fixed schedule i'm supposed to take a day a week off i don't i took my first weekend in a long time was this last weekend yesterday was the last day right cool i take I weekends think... i feel like they're very important for my uh, yes my mental Mental so health, Friday, Saturdays. Friday, Saturday? Mm -hmm. You have two days off? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I usually, well, not usually, sometimes I'll stream Friday night just for fun, but like, I don't know. I just think I feel on Sundays I come back and I'm so much more refreshed and happy. Yeah. If I don't do that, then I can just feel myself being like, oh, why are you complaining about this thing again? I have no patience, whereas otherwise I'm like, more empathetic so yeah i find it really really helpful on yep. those days off too are you still engaging on your social media or do you yeah yeah i i mean me engaging on social media is uh probably people taking away from social media i'm <laughs> yeah like your horrible. version of engaging is my version of like a super light day yes exactly. <laughs> i'm horrible with all of social media so <laughs> Yeah. I think um another thing is 
uh, that's important for content creators is just to diversify the types of content we do so that like yes. we don't have to stream all the time if we're doing other things that we enjoy uh, that still work towards our brands you know that can help ease the burden of like feeling like you're just burning out or working too much or like you know needing that break if, if you're mixing in uh, other things I think yeah I think brand identity can be far more expansive than a lot of people think we like to put ourselves in very very small boxes or very, very, very big boxes uh, where it's like, ah, I can do anything, even though you only really do that one thing. And other people are like, oh, I can only do that one thing. When if you actually sat down and created a sort of a mission statement for who you are as a streamer and as a brand, um, you could see ways in which you could expand out that content creation to include other things that you're immensely passionate about that um, some people that normally watch your video gaming stuff will also watch, but new people who don't watch video games at all may be really interested in seeing a certain type of engagement on Instagram, and a couple of those will trickle over. But even if they don't, you can still capitalize and leverage your Instagram following and engagement for, for brand deals, for uh, affiliate ships. Yeah. I think if you're working it um, in a less restrictive way, you can find a far superior long-term gain not only to uh, a satisfaction level, but also potentially to revenue, just straight cash, straight money. Mm -hmm. Cash money. <laughs> that was, I feel like I blacked out right there and just went on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> just speaking we were warned about okay. that, to be fair. <laughs> um, by the way, we will take questions for Q&A. So if you guys have any questions about anything we talked about, um, anything you want us to talk about that we haven't yet, feel free to shoot us question will uh even though i know i think a, a lot of people can't see us right now hey yes. if you can't see us raise your hand can't hear us <laughs> if you're not here because it looks like twitch was having a yeah. some sideways issues having a struggle yeah yep <laughs> <laughs> um so let's see uh chef asks how do you handle if you say you have a sponsored stream but you get sick on that scheduled date oh I, I've just always powered through it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm like, well, like I got sick on so, front page, when on front page days, and you're like, oh, oh, you gotta God, do it. Gotta do yeah. It. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then oh, afterwards, man. you're just like, okay, I'm gonna end the stream really early now, guys. Bye. And <laughs> just die later. Oh, <laughs> it depends. Oof. I mean, unless like you're like, like you need to go to the hospital and stuff, like obviously, you know, take care of your health first. But yeah. I mean, that's sure. just something like that's just a business thing, right? Like if you have a project due on that date at work, like and you don't feel good, like you still got to come in and do it, right? Like it's an mm -hmm. obligation. Um, but sometimes it depends on your contracts and who you're working with, if you can reschedule it or something. Yeah. I mean, but it's for things like food poisoning, for instance, that guarantees that you're not going to be in front of the camera. Like you, yeah. you, you know, <laughs> spend a lot of time not in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um and, and the same things like that will definitely uncontrollable have to pull you away from it it's not going to make right. for a good stream and you know the is a, a an intelligent enough argument to make for the sponsor that um you're that they're better off not paying you for the engagement when you would be putting on a horrible stream yeah Yes, that's and, and a really I, good point. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, if I literally have to get up and run to the bathroom, like, every 15 minutes because of food poisoning, there's you can't do anything about that. Like, it's not, you can't take, like, you know, some cold medicine and just be a little bit less bad. You're just, you're just stuck with that reality. Um, not going into detail with them is a good idea, but, you know, explaining that you would do nothing but put on a horrible show and you want to respect the relationship that you have with them and therefore right. not engage in the contract and, you know, apologize and whatever mm -hmm. for sure and then take uh, the time off so jailed asks uh uh so i don't know about netty or mop but you guys hunter and loco are already in stable place when it comes to twitch when you're growing slash not in a stable place wouldn't it hurt more to take that break smaller streamers i've talked to about this have put em emphasis on the loss of momentum when they have took taken breaks no um the exact same thing exists. The perspective on larger broadcasters changes from the outside. Yes. Um, 
I hear from people all the time that I can play whatever I want. I absolutely cannot play whatever I want. Yep. It's these kinds of things like internally, we see the, the, that reality as, as very different. Um, looking from that different perspective, it looks like, you know, we're making tons of money. We have a viewership that's always going to be there because I can take a few days off and still come back to having a couple or a few hundred people in the channel. But that's also not five or 600 people in the channel. There's always that higher block to hit. There's always like momentum is something that I struggle with and pay attention to a lot. I do these big launch events, 12 hours a day, reruns after it. We're talking about that early in the show to try and maintain the momentum of all the new people who are coming in and then uh, leverage that into content after the event is done. Like these are core concerns to broadcasters. And when we're looking at metrics and things, um, I don't think that changes at all depending on your scale. Um, one of the things right. I talk about once in a while too is like Co-Carnage and Ninja. You know, if Ninja, I don't know what Ninja's actual numbers are, but if Ninja has like 150,000 people on one day and comes back and streams to 60,000 people the next day, any of us would go like, dude, he's still got 60,000 people. That's crazy. But he's just lost over 50% of viewership from the day yeah. before. That's huge. And that feels mm -hmm. crippling. And, and that's all a percent. Yeah. Uh -huh. sure. I feel. Yeah. I, yeah. I might get some flack for this, for saying this, but... I also feel as though if you are at the point in a stream where if you lose five or 10 subs because you take a week off and you can't pay your rent because of that, I think maybe you should be supplementing that income with Completely a job agree. as well. Because yes, there's yes. so many people who are just starting out and go full time. And, you know, if they lose five subs, that's that's their income. And I think that's not a very, I mean, I, everyone has their own situations, but sure. to me, I don't think that's a very uh, financially responsible decision. Yeah, for sure. You're going to have to yeah. take a step back and <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe reevaluate everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, your margin should not be that thin no. that like $20 is making or breaking you. Yeah. You know? Like that's like, that's, that's dangerous. Um, I think also there's a difference between taking like a break and like just being very inconsistent. Like yes. if you're if you have a schedule and you're not hitting your schedule, that's those aren't taking breaks. Like I mean, that you need to have consistency. It's extremely important. Yeah. I get told a lot that I'm a very consistent streamer and I'm like quite often five <laughs> five minutes late and to me that's like a really big deal. And then I see some <laughs> streamers who are like hours late and they're like sorry i slept in i'm like is this a thing <laughs> like sorry bro let's go anyway. come on <laughs> yeah i feel so bad being are you from a minutes. military family per chance <laughs> no no and no. five minutes is because there's yeah. like this there's this thing i like I, i'm so stuck in in the if you're if you're on time you're late thing right like, yeah be or being early is where you have to be but then like well and then how is that early i don't know yeah i totally i, I totally get what you're saying yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, one yeah, of the I mean, things I really want to do is in the new year is making sure I stay to a strict schedule. Cause some, like I always, I'm always live on the days that I'm going to go live, but sometimes I might be late because I don't have enough time to fit in my actual real life things like laundry, cleaning, cooking, feeding myself because of the fact that I try to juggle both full-time job and yeah. Training. So yeah, I want to really make it. That's why I switched everything around. It was like, no, I'm going to now dedicate three days strict to work, four days strict to Twitch, and then no more mixing it up so therefore i think it'll be it'll keep it consistent and then i'll i'll feel happier about it yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah really we'll is. see <laughs> good luck questions. with it thanks <laughs> <laughs> i hope it goes really well um a braxo cleaner asked uh do you do any of you feel like during the times of need that's depression that struggle whatever your creative process gets better no yeah. Do, uh, no. Totally catch it. <laughs> Sorry. Do, do you? So when you get depressed, does it fuel your creativity? Does it, or like, does it what? I guess if you're not, if you're just going through a hard time, do you feel like you have, I guess, more creativity? Oh. Mm. No, not for me. No. It kind no. of de depression usually is a big shutdown. So. Yeah. It yeah. depends on the nature of the hard time. I think. True. Like sometimes I, yeah. it turns into a motivation for like, it's the necessity itself, you know, necessity being the mother of an invention. Uh, when 
sometimes when it becomes crunch time and I'm like, oh, I have no money and I'm going to die homeless uh, next week. Um, <laughs> then I'm like, oh, I got to buckle down and okay, what can I do? Okay, we're going to, we're just going to, we just got to do that thing and got to do, it doesn't make me more creative. It makes me more like neurotic. Yeah. <laughs> and like that sense of urgency, I think uh, creates, you know, and, and it's, it's very unpleasant. Like it's not, it's not a thing that, that, that I would, that I would desire things get done to be sure, but um, I don't think that increases creativity. Yeah, yeah I think it's all in my brain, which is not good. Yeah, well, I inspire what? or motivate, but not make it more so. Yeah. yeah, I was going through a breakup like two weeks ago, and I took a few days off stream as well. And I finished a paint by number I've had for months, oh. and I just sat down on the couch Yay. one day and painted for like eight hours. So that's awesome. I mean, that's maybe a. I mean, that's not depression was I mean was that bad but you know yeah 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 <laughs> so, so that maybe that was a good thing I don't know like needing the creative outlet or something to commit to where you're building something into your life or just yeah right yeah. beauty yeah Sounds yeah good <laughs> a little positive. but I think like yeah I mean with streaming it's different I think because it's just like you're you're entertaining right you're putting yourself out there you, it's not like you can like, if you're feeling terrible like that's gonna come across you know, in your stream too. They're so. see it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not necessarily, but yeah, it depends on the, probably depends on the person. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Zia asks, uh, how do you even start uh, scheduling for streaming that accounts for behind the scenes work, streaming a fair number of hours, time off, and being able to host raid streamers you want to support <laughs> and feel important enough into your timetable in that way? That's a lot of ands. Like, oh, that's I'm gonna um, try that. I feel yeah, like that's like the, the perfect Discord. mind of a streamer. How do you do all uh, these things and that? <laughs> yeah, <Shit. laughs> yeah. It's a, um, I actually talk about this a lot more. Some of my more recent like intellectual work has been about the plight of the millennial, and uh, that is one of the factors because doing any kind of non-traditional um, work, which is easier now than ever, right? It's like, everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody's trying to create a vlog, a blog, um, stream, do YouTube yeah. content, um, run their own business in some form or fashion and have that kind of unique control. We have to do everything. You're your own marketing manager. You're your own creative director. You're your own production agency, right? You're, 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 you're legal department as well, right? You're human resources, you're the content creator, um, accountant, you're, you're doing all the standard stuff and entirely new stuff all at the same time. And it's an incredibly challenging struggle. I think time management is one of the most critical qualities. Uh, it's one of the things that we're talking about uh, that I've been, I've been doing with uh, uh, coaching sessions through Patreon looking at how people manage their own time and i'm learning so much about myself in this <laughs> that's awesome. not even knowing how much time you spend on things is one of the most crippling factors because we, we we go oh i need to do this and you sit down to do it with no time constraints and no understanding of how long it's how long you expect it to take how long it should take and when your cutoff is you need to answer emails you sit down to answer emails eight hours later you can be done if you don't have like a 30 minute deadline and a cutoff, then you're not prioritizing what needs to get handled first. And you're not really scheduling your time in a way that can be the maximally effective for all the things that you need to do. And that's where we get into this, this crazy tension, this push and pull of, I can never do enough. I can never be enough because we don't even know what enough really looks like in terms of our time. And that time always ties in to what we can achieve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice I fun. find even goals like are really dangerous. Um, like, you know, I, I reached 50,000 followers and was like, all right, I'm never going to care about my followers again. I'm <laughs> never going to look at them. Don't care. I reached my goal. And every day I'm like, oh, I'm at like 52,000. I'm like, <laughs> you dirty phone. liar. <laughs> I know. And it's so unhealthy. And I, I know that, that I struggle. Do that. I think everybody does that, right? Not just me. <laughs> Not yeah. just no. you. Just, no. <laughs> yeah. It's awful. I, I have found it easier to habitually kind of, um, I look at my numbers far less now to the point that it's become accidental. 
I had, I've, I had to, so probably for about like 9,000 hours of streaming, I had to like intentionally go like, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look. And now I'll go like, oh man, I wonder what my numbers were for that game last week. Like I'm that clueless about some of these, some of these things sometimes where it's just an accident. That's really nice. Like creating the habit out of it. And it's really challenging. I'm totally with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I as soon as I close, like the current viewers is like so much happier. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So good. Oh yes. <laughs> anyway, this is very off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just popped into my mind. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I think I think uh, Hunter, you pretty much nailed that out. Like it's it's yeah. hard to predict how much time you're going to spend on everything. Like it's something you got to do, and then like look after you've done it, and then kind of nail it out that way. Uh, it's a constantly balancing thing, though. Like, we talked about that at TwitchCon, and we still don't know the answer to work-life balance and time management, so. Um, <laughs> King Solar asks, do you worry about streaming too much that it takes away from your enjoyment of streaming? I.e. not taking breaks you know you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... Um something that has been really refreshing for me has been recording those uh vodka or not vodcast the premieres because mm -hmm. yeah because i'm still like helping my stream but i'm like playing a game that's not for stream even though it is i still like enjoy it better because i'm not i don't know i'm not as on i guess um so that's kind of like refreshed my joy of streaming again because it like i'm playing a game for me and not for people and I think that's important. Oh, that's an interesting point. Um, yeah. Like refreshing your perspective on it is, huh. Because once it becomes a job, it's people are like, what's your hobby? And I always go gaming. And then I'm like, oh, that's, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> is it really a hobby anymore? I don't know. <laughs> so it's a hard, it's a hard thing. I honestly don't know if I could beat a game without chat. <laughs> well, then, yeah. Chat's back yeah. to you. Oh. Yes, I just get no. stuck and I be like, hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. I, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my walkthrough? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the question, like, I mean, for sure. I mean, that's like what burnout is. It's like you're streaming, but like you're not like I get that way all the not all the time, but I get that way when I get burnt out where I'm like, I, I that's why that's why I force myself to take breaks, because I know that I'm like. If I come back, I'm going to enjoy this like 10 times more. And like chat's going to be able to tell. Yeah. 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 If it gets to a point where you're struggling pressing that live button or you're not, you, you're just feeling more like Ugh, about it rather than excited, then definitely that's a huge sign. You have to take a break. Yeah. So, yeah. Or you've been streaming too much at that time. <laughs> I don't listen to that at all. I go, oh, click. <laughs> all right. <laughs> in the zone <laughs> yeah yeah I, put, I definitely put myself into it uh oh the refreshing the that's what it was i was struggling to see what worked my way back into the thing that popped into my head when you're talking about it mom um refreshing your perspective on streaming and the joy that you have when you're creating the content and you're in the moment and you're you're doing the flow thing right you want it you want to create those moments of flow where time disappears. You find yourself on the far side of eight hours of streaming. And you're like, what? I thought it'd been like 45 minutes. That's the best um, feeling. <laughs> yeah. Manufacturing those moments is possible. And I think one of the ways of allowing that to occur is through genuine time off, but also through doing stuff that's outside of your comfort zone um or just outside of the norm so like you know like i remember when i was uh doing art regularly it'd always be like how do i how do i get more creative like what, what what can i do right we're always just googling some of these simple simple questions of like how do good art better um and it's you know stuff like taking a different route to work uh going to a different coffee shop sitting in a different spot brushing with the left hand if you're right-handed stuff like that uh just sort of mixing it up and I think the approach that that you're taking, incidentally, of recording stuff off stream where you're not engaging with chat and you're sort of just doing it in your way, on your time, on your schedule, whatever you want. You want to do it at 2 a.m., you want to do it at 8 a.m. 
doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Uh, that I feel like that would mix things up. Does it feel like it's really mixed things up in a way that like when you come back to streaming, it sounded like that's what you're saying. Like you're different and more invigorated. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's like refreshing. Um, it's like when you play a new game, I find every time you start a new game, streams fly by. Cause I think it's like <laughs> refreshing. I don't know. I, there's, I can't think of a better word. Yeah, it feels new. There's the novelty. It's sort of like being in a relationship uh, for the first time. It's like you don't see anything but that person. You know, there's like the greatest thing ever. It's like that video game. It's like, oh, this is filling all my hopes and dreams. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I think oh, also yeah. when when you're like a community based streamer, like chat can really carry the streams often. Like yeah. especially like with a new game, if chat's hyped, if chat's moving, like if you're just going with the flow, like it's so streams are so easy. It's like. When, when streaming is like, okay, like, you know, chat slows down or it's like, okay, I've been playing this game for like 40 hours, but I want to finish it, but it's like losing my interest a bit, stuff like that. Like those moments can be uh, harder, especially when you're like, okay, I've not had a day off in like a month. Like this is, this is not as fun, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would I just think that would be really fun to actually create content or like playing games offline with not because the Twitch engagements and just actually enjoying the game and and yourself. Yeah. So that's awesome, Mob. You kind of like yeah. want to make me try that. I, <laughs> yeah. I, so I used to do I, that. This is why we do this. I even started Twitch. So I used to do that with YouTube. Really? Um yeah, I started with YouTube before I went to oh, Twitch. Nice. Yeah, and so I did uh, playthroughs before, obviously, Twit or uh, YouTube decided to copyright everything. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I used to do that. And it was so fun because you would just do your own natural, like you just talk to yourself and enjoy the game and and uh, actually like, no, actually fully enjoy the game. Because a lot of times when we play the storyline games and when you're a variety streamer, you are you do enjoy it, but you, you almost push through it because you want to make sure to get that game done before the next game comes out that you know oh, is coming out. God, Does that make sense? That yeah. So well. And I just like, I wish sometimes I could just fully sit there for 80 hours and really in fully play the game instead of just playing most of the storyline and maybe some side quests um, because I know that this other game's coming out and I have to make sure that I'm ready for that. Right. Doesn't playing make sense, the game so. versus producing yeah. content, Yeah, I think. And, and I think I, feel, I sort of feel like that they're, depending on how you operate for yourself, I know that some people, this is not gonna be true, um, I feel like doing pre-recorded if you're used to streaming, you can give yourself different rules yeah. and define what that's going to be in a way that you can't anymore once you've committed to a certain sort of on-stream identity and how you engage. You know, you have to keep those people there getting what they're used to for very good reason. Um, but if you're going to be creating something entirely different, you'd be like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to, you know, hand this off to an editor or a Reddit myself and, you know, maybe take out moments when I'm not talking because I'm just so engrossed in what's happening or maybe do some crazy, you know, funky music over a moment when I'm not talking because there's a really intense fight. You can do something very different with that. And it, I feel like that could open up some real liberation. Yeah. 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 It's great. So, um, <laughs> thanks for the inspiration. We have time Matt. for, yeah, yeah, that was, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> so we have time for one more question, uh, today. If we didn't get to your question, uh, I encourage you guys to come check out the Streamer Square Discord because yes. it is literally a, a Discord of streamers. Like, you can ask these questions and there are people that will talk to you about streaming. So, um, definitely check that out if you guys haven't, um, go join that. Uh, but our last question is, what is your stance to the following situation? Uh, when you're not feeling like you're able to, uh, I guess, create good content and are sad feeling down, do you actually stream? If so, how does it affect you in your stream? Uh, length, energy level, are you forcing yourself to be happy even though you're not, et cetera? Good question. Good question. I generally still stream when I'm down. Um, I feel like people are very, I'm like very happy with my community because people are generally very positive and nice and I feel like if you're feeling down people just kind of are uplifting and make you feel better um streaming to me is still just like makes me happy like genuinely happy so I think it kind of takes you or for me it like takes me out of my own head if I'm feeling down and yeah. just I don't overthink everything and I just get out of there for a while yeah. And 
you know, just have a good time. As long as it's a game I like, like there's certain games I'll play if I'm feeling down. Um, Cause I know really? they won't make me mad. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> Cause you don't want to be frustrated when you're yeah, the, so, yeah. The frustration of certain games, just if you know, it's going to get you salty and you're already in an iffy mood and yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've started becoming a little bit more transparent with my community and if I, cause mostly it's just like IRL stuff that might imp- might put you in a mood and then you're just about to start stream and you're like okay i'm just letting you know i'm kind of starting off not in the best of places but we'll i'll I'll move past it but this is just a good way to just let them know like i might just be a little bit quieter today or um yeah just mostly that your engagement in the beginning is not really gonna be uh entirely there until about like a little bit later where you kind of just push past whatever it is that you're entering the stream with when yeah so every time I'm in a bad mood, I usually just tell them, tell people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I find like, <laughs> I, I'm the same way. Like I, I, there are days where I wake up and I don't feel great or yeah. I just like something happens, I'm having tech issues, something IRL. And I'm just oh, like, yeah. shoes. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So yeah, I like it. And I'll get on stream and I know that streaming is going to make me feel better. Like being with the community, always o- like always uplifts my mood. That being said, things can happen during the stream that bring my mood down. Like mm-hmm. tech issues really quickly bring my mood down. Audio um, issues, dude. Yeah. yeah. Or just sometimes like you're just not you're just not feeling it. You're just like, you know, halfway through the stream, you're just like, okay, like you need that time for yourself. So don't be afraid to cut a stream short yeah. uh, to get that me time or just like cool off. If, if you're just not feeling it, don't. If yeah. you feel like you're forcing don't yourself, force then yeah, don't force it. And that there's a little bit of flexibility that can exist there too. Well, I wouldn't recommend always looking at things like this if you need to not be on stream right now, but you still want to have community engagement. So you can do off stream games with your uh, with with subs viewers. You can uh, host an impromptu movie night with yeah. you know things like Rabbit, Rabbit, and other uh, similar sites. Um, you know, maybe depending on what mood you're into or what you sort of want to want to do, is it going to be related to the game that you're currently playing? Like you, you play in a Fallout related game, you're going to watch like Mad Max or something. Uh, you need something uplifting. You're going to watch one of your favorite comedies with your community. Don't feel I would I would definitely. <laughs> this is part of my thinking is not advise you to always look at ways to keep engaging and right. you, sometimes you just need to take that take that time even when you're calling a stream midstream because you're not in that that right mood but if you still want to be there but you just you're not going to be putting on the best show yeah. you you there are potential alternatives for sure yeah um so with that guys we're going to wrap it up here uh big thanks to mop and Nettie. thank you guys for joining us on the show thank you. um yeah, thanks a ton. <laughs> that was fun it's been awesome great Let's uh let's do some shout outs starting with Nettie. Tell us where we can find you and what you're up to. Uh you can find me at Nerdy Nettie on Twitch. And I will I'm finishing Red Dead finally. The Woo-hoo! epilogue. Yeah. I saw you catch nice. a fish the other day. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that fish. Um yeah, so finally finished <laughs> the whole storyline of uh, Red Dead today and then tomorrow cool. I, or uh, Wednesday I start last year. The nightmare. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> excited. Mop. Oh, uh, all my socials are just at Mop Garden. Um, this week, I don't know what I'm going to be playing tomorrow. Maybe Fallout 76. Um, but I will be starting uh, Neo, which <gasps> I haven't played. Oh, so I'm excited. For nice. That. Yes. Oh, it's so good. It's yeah. So good. It's all good. Come. It is good. <laughs> it's so punishing. It- Oh, you're gonna love it! It's so punishing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love Dark Souls, so I'm looking. Oh, you're, you're gonna, gonna love it! You're gonna love yeah. it! Oh, yeah. yeah. Bloodborne <laughs> and Neo are, are two top ones for me. It's so good. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> <sighs> I am the Hunter Wild, um, or as Loco introduced me, the Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at the Hunter Wild TV, uh, where I've been super active uh, lately. My, my, I took two days off from streaming, but apparently not from tweeting. Like, I, I think I had like 280 comments and engagements, uh, back and forth conversational bits over the last two days. 
months. It was, it's, that was like brutal. I loved it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to be streaming. I have, I just suddenly, I finished uh, two, two indie titles last week uh, and I, and I was so in love with them and I don't know what's coming up for this, this week, but I will be gone for a week over Christmas. And I hope that you all have some wonderful holidays, uh, whether you yeah. celebrate or not, the time that exists at this period of the year, it can be really cool. And sometimes really cold. <laughs> what about you, Loco? <laughs> uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Loco. That's L-O-W-C-O. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be playing Gris. Uh, so I'm really excited <gasps> to check that out. Ooh. Yeah. I just uh, put that on my shopping cart. Nice. Um, and uh, twitter.com slash Loco2525. Uh, and we have uh, a show here tomorrow at 4 p.m. called The Stream Doctor, where I will uh, I review channels so you can submit your channel. I'll take a look at it, give you advice, and answer questions. Uh, there is a small chance I may not be able to make it tomorrow because I currently uh, feel dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm uh, getting the flu or the cold, but oh, no. um, it's fine. I, it's I'm I'm just sweaty. That's fine. It's all good. It's a good example just... of taking a break when you need it. Set yes. a good yeah. example for the stream. Yes, mom. Uh, Preaching, mom. Yeah. I don't know if I need a break. I'm alive still. My heart's beating. <laughs> Loco. <Loco. laughs> Um, but uh, if you guys are new here, uh, check us out at streamersquare.com. Join our Discord. We also have a YouTube channel where all of this content gets highlighted and thrown up on the YouTube. Uh, so if you want to watch past episodes, this is our last. Um, this is our last show of 2018. Uh, oh. So you can check out all 40 of our previous episodes on YouTube and um, and check us out on Patreon. If you guys like what we're doing, support us on Patreon. And uh, we've got some content up there for you guys. We're doing some Q&As in Discord. We've got coaching. We've got some awesome stuff for you guys uh, and behind the stream scenes. So if you want to yes. see what we're going to talk about as soon as the outro rolls out. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see all the ridiculous and beautiful conversation and jokes and, and whatever ramblings we have before and after we actually put on the show, that stuff is available on Patreon. Yeah, so if you like what we do, come check us out on Patreon and give us a, a dollar or two. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the stream, Doctor. If not, have a great new year. And we will see you in 2019 with new content. Have a great, Happy holidays. Have a great night. Happy Bye, guys. Good night, my friends. Bye. <laughs>